Teachers are often positive about the value of using inquiry-based learning, but many find it difficult to overcome the barriers for adopting this approach in their classrooms. The most frequently mentioned barriers are a lack of understanding of RBL, time constraints due to curriculum demands, difficulties with assessment, and the lack of resources. Many teachers have heard about RBL, but often they don't understand what it is and they are unsure how to implement it in the classroom. One reason for this is due to the available literature, where the term inquiry is used in a variety of ways. There does not seem to be any clear definition or constant way of describing RBL, and it's also difficult to find good clear information explaining how to incorporate inquiry into curriculum contexts. The best possible way for teachers to develop a good understanding of RBL is through professional development, but unfortunately these are not always available and teachers are often left to develop their own understanding. In these cases, it's important for the teacher to find out what the essential features of RBL are. There are many frameworks that can be used by a teacher to facilitate RBL and these provide guidance on the steps and processes that a teacher should consider when they are designing their lessons. These frameworks tend to follow similar cycles with slightly different steps, but essentially a lesson starts with some form of introduction to the topic, followed by questions. Students are then given the opportunity to perform their own research or take part in activities before discussing their findings. They are then given an opportunity to reflect on their learning. Starting out with RBL, it can be helpful to use a scaffolding approach and slowly introduce inquiry to your class. Also, by initially using a structured inquiry approach, both the teacher and the students become more familiar with the process and they gain confidence. A teacher will become more proficient at using RBL if they have a deeper, integrated understanding of the curriculum content, as this helps them to facilitate students' inquiries. This means that when students ask questions, the teacher can reply with leading questions to help them discover the answers for themselves, rather than the teacher simply supplying them. Inquiry then becomes less daunting for a teacher, as they are better prepared to deal with a variety of questions, as well as ensuring that the students are being guided correctly. Another reason for not adopting RBL is the belief that it takes too much time. It is true that RBL can be time consuming, especially at the start. Initially it's important for a teacher to dedicate time to planning activities for the inquiries and being prepared so that they are able to preempt the students' difficulties. It will also take time for students to get to grips with the new approach, but introducing them to RBL using familiar content can make the transformation smoother. As the teacher becomes more experienced with RBL, their planning becomes more efficient and they are able to build a library of resources. There is a perception that learning through RBL takes too long and teachers are also concerned that they won't have enough time to fulfill the curriculum requirements. However, teachers can incorporate different types of inquiry to suit different situations and they become more adept in their methods, enabling them to fulfill the curriculum requirements. Students also become equipped with the skills to work through the inquiry process more effectively. The primary role of assessment is to improve student learning. However, many teachers use assessment merely to audit the learning and this is often due to the pressure they are under to help their students to achieve high grades in the final examination. The OECD have highlighted the fact that the best performers in the PISA tests tend to give their schools more autonomy over their curriculums and assessment. Other education systems are beginning to recognise this and many are following this trend. For example, in Ireland they are in the process of introducing a new junior cycle that offers schools more flexibility around the implementation of their curriculum 
and the ability to use multiple means of assessment. This means that the teachers are able to align learning outcomes, teaching and learning activities, and assessment. Not all schools and teachers have the same level of autonomy, but where standardized tests subsist and the final assessment focuses on content knowledge, it doesn't necessarily mean that the use of RVL should be excluded. It is possible to embed the required curriculum content in an RVL classroom and prepare students for an exam while also developing a deeper understanding of the content. A teacher can make the learning goals clear to students from the start, and by making direct connections between these learning goals and formative assessment, it is possible to prepare students for summative assessments. Again, this needs to be carefully planned, and often it is useful to begin with the assessment and then designing the learning around it. Resources are vital for an RBL classroom, and teachers are often of the opinion that they don't have the required resources to teach this way. This could be a lack of materials or equipment, little or no access to technology, or a lack of learning resources and ideas. A lack of resources is not something that is easily solved, but professional development is one way to overcome this barrier. Teachers can learn how to create their own resources, but there are instances where this is not possible. In these cases, schools could link up with other schools to share resources and ideas. There are also numerous ideas on the internet, and setting up a personal learning network can help the teacher to find suitable resources. The use of technology in an IBL classroom helps students to actively engage in their learning, but a lack of technology does not make it impossible. By developing a PLN, teachers are able to develop different approaches where technology is lacking. However, as we move further into the 21st century, the PLN will become more important for finding online resources that aid inquiry. Although a video like this cannot fully address the various constraints for adopting RBL, it is hoped that teachers recognize that it is possible to overcome the challenges associated with using a student-centered approach. Direct instruction may quickly allow students to regurgitate information, but RBL provides a richer, more diverse learning experience for students and helps them retain their knowledge.